What is up guys, Shinchi42 here and today we're going to be talking about how can you earn a lot of alliance credits or individual credits and also in this video we're going to be talking about how can you farm for your storehouse. So, so all these resources, how can you get them into your storage house? And also, I'm going to be explaining you guys how can you be promoted to be a rank 4 officer, be a leader in your alliance. So tune in, and if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and turn that notification on if you like contents like this, anything about tips for Rise of Civilizations and guides to make you better. Subscribe and turn the notification on. So as you guys can see, we are building a flag. Now, the cost of flag can be expensive, but we are expanding our alliance. Now, we are in the late stage of the game where we don't have to rapidly build an alliance. Now, what we do is we send a certain amount of units. So as here you see, we can send one to 10 units or we try to send one to 10 units. We used to do 50 units. And we've also done this since the beginning when the when they opened up the um, alliance shop and um, i haven't been disclosed this uh technique because i didn't want it to spread but i think it's time to share it to the community but some of you guys may have already know how to do this but here i am to explain it to some of the people that doesn't know so i have the flag here and if you click build as you can see we've sent one unit here in some, okay, so some had sent 128. So this kind of just messed things up for us, but we have to talk to her and send that, you know, one unit only when we're trying to build a flag. When we put a marker, the members should be looking at the marker and send only specific amount of units that have been requested. Now, so you guys can see, we've sent a uh, less amount of units. And um, what happens here is that the building time is shorter. The more uh, units you send, the more the building times are being built quicker. So the more units you send, the longer it takes, the more alliance credit you get, and also the more individual credits. And as you guys can see, the individual credits here is, you know, for about an hour and 43 minutes, I've already earned 6K here, 6K individual credits. Now, what is this individual credits? Now, if I go to alliance shop, as you can see here, this is the individual credit. This is what it's going to do. It's going to increase your alliance credits. Now, with the alliance uh, inventory, this is the alliance credit. So this is for leaders in rank four officers. If they want to buy uh, any any resources here or any items here that can be bought into the alliance credits, uh, sorry, in the individual credits for each members. So as you guys can see in TIK, we've or, we've spent a lot, or as you can see, hundreds, you know, fifty hundreds. As you can see, we are wealthy in this. So we generally try to, or at least I try to. Um, make sure that our members are able to buy anything from the Alliance invent alliance shop so that they can improve themselves in this game. Now, there's other ways to earn these individual credits. So to earn some of the individual credits, you can also uh, donate here in the Alliance technology. And as you can see, you will earn individual credits here. And another way is for the help button. So in the help button, you can also earn in the, you know daily reward credit rewards. As you can see, it is capped off, as you can see over there. It's going to re refresh in here. So let's get back to this. As you guys can see, we are earning a lot of credits here, and this is maximizing the potential of individual credits. Now, if you guys have not tried this, I suggest that you guys start now and earn that individual credit so that you guys can buy a lot of things in the Alliance shop. Now, leave a comment in the comment section below if you guys have been doing this already or if you guys have not been doing this and if you guys think this is a good tip, give it a thumbs up or is it a good hack? Is it hacking the system? I am not so sure. Leave a comment in the comment section below. So another way for you guys to earn some Alliance credits or individual credits is by building this Alliance Resource Center. Now, the way you need to do it, you need to be an officer or a leader to, to partake into this one. So you go to territory and then you have this Alliance Resource Center. You can um, deploy um, granary, wood, stone, and gold. Now, once you have deployed this, as you guys can see here, this is our Alliance Resource Center. And uh, you go to this eye icon and there's some information here. 
Now, in the information in this one, as you guys can see, Alliance Resource Center must be constructed on the Alliance territory. So you have to have a flag there, like this flag, and that's the time you can build this. All right. And then also Alliance members whose city hall are level eight are the one that can participate in the building this. Governors may only send one dispatch, so you can only have one troops that get into the Alliance uh, Resource Center to build it. All right. Once the Alliance resource uh, centers reserve have been depleted all troops gathering at the center will automatically return home so it's similar to when you're farming a node when you finish that when you deplete that uh, node you're going to go back home all right alliance resource center cannot be attacked either during construction or while troops are gathering so this is a good place for you guys to hide so they will not get attacked um, if construction is not completed within three days, resource center will be dismantled. So you guys have to make sure that you guys complete this within three days. So the way the strategy is, if you can send maybe a few units here, just make sure, to, you know, sending a few units to earn that alliance credits or individual credits, make sure that this is going to be built in three days. But if you guys don't want to build it in three days, you are going to still earn some alliance or individual credits. Okay, so this is a good way to really farm for those credits. So it's, it's going to be depending on your strategy. All right, let me take a step back here. I said if you can't finish the building of this Alliance Resource Center, you will still get Alliance credits. Now, I haven't tried this, but you guys can try it and let me know in the comment section below what happens when you build the Alliance Resource Center and you don't complete it, will you still earn Alliance credits? So do let me know because I am intrigued. Uh, number seven here, if Resource Center will be, sorry, Resource Center will be dismantled Three days after construction. So after you finish the building of this, you have three days to complete and deplete. I just rhymed there. Complete and deplete. Complete and deplete <laughs> this resource center. It will dismantle by itself. It says here, even if their resource reserves have not yet been depleted. So there it is, guys. Make sure you guys complete this within three days or it's going to boop, gone. All right. So now let's recall. How can I get some resources into your storehouse so a lot of you guys may be struggling especially for the new players and i've talked about this before but i want to re reiterate this in this video so how can i get more alliance food wood stone and gold so as you can see i'm also producing a lot of resources here right so the way i produce these resources is because i have controlled a lot of the uh, deposits so these deposits you can go to the um, alliance page again go to territory and you can see Alliance uh, resource points is this. So I have controlled a lot of them. And let me show you what they are. Wait, first, I have to find them because I didn't really prepare for this. But okay, here it is. So if you see this deposit, Alliance depo stone deposit, so this is how you gain earnings per hour. Now, there are also the wood, and, okay, the logging camp. And also there is the gold and um, the food. So the most important really here is in the end, you need to get as much gold as you can early on and build up that gold um, uh, resource stock here. Because you guys can see, we spend a lot of gold here trying to research, build flags, because the cost goes up once you have every 10 flags, the cost of building another set would be expensive. As you guys can see, we're always running out of gold here, right? So you guys need to capture gold. So gold is very crucial in the late game. So what else can I do? So I've captured those lands. Now I have captured these deposits. Now what can I do to earn more for my Alliance storehouse? Now what you guys need to do is you guys need to farm inside your territory. So if you guys can see, this is the territory border. You guys can see the orange, that's my territory. Now I have a resource node here and I need to farm this. So when I farm this, an X amount of uh, resources will go to your um, Alliance storehouse. So that was the initial thought is X amount. We didn't know what it was. But now I can tell you guys it will be 1% of what you gather here would go to your Alliance territory. And also when you're gathering inside your territory, you would have this uh, gathering speed increased by 10, 20, sorry, 25% when you are gathering resources in Alliance territory. All right. Now, you can attack resource point that is occupied by other governors also, and then you can take the occupation from there. Now, here's the thing that you guys may have been confused of. You guys may, you know, if you guys start to farm here, let's say I was here, like, um, let me give you an example. So I'm here right now, or um, I have clashed with somebody else. So let's say I'm marching into the um, this logging camp and somebody else is marching there. 
So at the same time they're marching. So accidentally, you're going to see a red marker later on. Once you get into that Alliance logging camp, and then he tries to enter the logging camp unintentionally, he will not attack you. The troop will go back home, and there will be no attack report. The only time you get an attack report is when you're already in the logging camp, and then somebody directs, you know, directly try to attack you. So I want to make that clear because there was a lot of confusion there before because we didn't know what was going on. So that was a very good um, learning process for us here in TIK. And but I think we I learned that during uh, when I was in the uh, Kingdom 14. So I hope that clears out a lot of confusion. If you guys think that was a good tip, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below if you guys already knew about this. All right, guys, so let's discuss how do you become a rank four officer? What do you need to do for a leader to promote you to be an officer? Now, I'm going to tell you guys that this may be slightly different or probably very different because everyone has their own approach. Every alliance leaders will have their own approach. So my approach will probably be different to your leader or to the other leaders. But I'm going to be giving you guys a template of how I choose my own officer and whether you guys may like it or not, it depends on your approach. But this is a strategy game, so everyone will have a different approach. Okay, so let's stop the rambling and I'm going to tell you guys what I do. So in TIK, the way I promote my members or the way they can get promoted is by being first, being active. So if they're very active, it shows me that they have the desire to become an officer. Then second is not just being active. I look at the king, uh, sorry, not kingdom chat. I look at the alliance chat. Who are the most participant in the alliance chat? Who engages the members to a conversation? And not just that. Third thing is who sets up rallies a lot? Because I want leaders to be able to set up rallies so that people can look up to them. Now, a good example here is Achilles. When we first started this um, alliance, he's still he's been us he's he's been with us for a while now. This back in past back in past two era, Achilles is one of the players that had a higher castle size. So he usually starts to rally up and I rally uh, barbarian force, and I always see it. So I was like, hey, you know, you've been doing a great job. Would you like to become an officer? And he accepted it. So now he is an officer. Simple like that. Simple things like that. I do things to um, accommodate for the players that do a great job in our alliance. Um, BD Pat came from an alliance called BOL, which is our family alliance. And he was the uh, warlord in there. So, and he is also the highest ranking member in TIK now. So I have given him the warlord status here in TIK. So uh, this one is kind of just given because he is the highest power and he deserves to be a warlord. If you have the highest power here, you gotta be definitely the warlord, right? That just benefits him when we go to a war with the buff for Warlord. So you can see the Warlord buff is going to increase troop attack by 1% and defense by 1%. And he is a good guy and I, he deserves the Warlord status. And I want to say that I am definitely be relying on BD Pat to do a lot of the strategies for Alliance Battlegrounds. So uh, we've already talked about this. I see his uh, mindset on Alliance Battlegrounds and I like it. Being a leader, you don't have to do everything and it's really time consuming. So you need to delegate works. So I delegate a strategy to BD Pat because I rely on him and he has some really good strategies. So I'm very excited to see his approach for our next Alliance Battlegrounds and for the future. So for my other officers, um, Donny Boy used to be the BOL Alliance leader, and he is one of the best strategists and also recruiter I have ever met in this game. So this is why he is here. He is contributing, going to be contributing a lot for this alliance. Now Schwarzenegger used to be an alliance leader. So that's why he is an officer here. Uh, when he came to us, he was very active also. He engages in the uh, alliance chat. And then I talked to him, I was like, hey, you seem like a good leader. Let me see how you can fit in for the officer role. So what I do is I personally message the uh, members here when I see that they are engaging the members. So I message them, hey, are you interested to become a, a rank four officer or not? But then if they say no, it's fine. I look for another officer that would, that, sorry, I look for another potential officers. So a lot of players here have already told me no because they don't want to play this role because being an officer, plays a critical role in this game. Now, Eagles. 
Eagles, I offered Eagles to be an officer because he's always been so nice and active and very respectful, a great diplomat. I saw it in him. So I messaged him. I said, do you want to be an officer here in TIK? And he accepted it. And now I branded him as our official envoy. He is going to be a crucial part of this alliance to really uh, create a bridge for other alliances to connect being an envoy or so a diplomat. So I love Dim Sum is also one of the officers. He is an officer here because he is my cousin. So let's skip that because that's a free given pass. But I love Dim Sum have already uh, contributed a lot in this alliance since the beginning. He was my officer and he created a lot of flags. He did a lot of work, a lot of leg, leg work here. Um, it's amazing because when I first started this alliance, I had my cousin, I had my cousin-in-law, and I had my brother. So organizing the alliance, you know, was so easy. There wasn't a lot of pushback because we all um, aligned ourselves to one goal of being successful in this kingdom. So that's something that probably is not going to happen a lot unless you have a, you know, your family actually playing the game and be in one alliance. So if you look at um, NBS here, NBS is an alliance leader also. So a lot of these players had a role before they actually came here in TIK because um, a lot of our original officers are already gone. They've uh, become inactive. So we already took in new um, officers also being an older kingdom. So with NBS, um, he is an old alliance leader of FTF. He controls a lot of players that are in the Vietnamese community. And uh, he was the leader there. And uh, I really like this dude. He is a very nice guy. And um, I saw that his leadership in communicating to the uh, Vietnamese community that are in TIK. So I decided to give him the leadership role here so that he is going to be able to communicate well with the other uh, members here that are Vietnamese. So that's simple for that one. And here's Omni. Omni, um, very active. And, um, you know, he engaged a lot in the uh, community in the TIK so I've granted him also the uh, rank 4 officer and um, the, the, th the key thing here is to be an officer is just basically be active and also uh, they suggest a lot of things here they tell me what they can do and um, here it is Omni applied actually Omni asked me to be an officer so I said hey you know what he's a cool dude yeah, I mean I like how he has been in this in this alliance and he's been here for a long time I see his loyalty I'm going to be granting him an officer role here because I think he is going to be able to contribute a lot being an officer. So delegate the work. Uh, Omni is pretty much in charge of uh, setting up the flags, making sure that we have has, the flags are aligned to our vision. So delegate the work, guys, because you don't want to, um, if you're an alliance leader, you don't want to do all the work because it's too time consuming. And I have done that. And sometimes I still do it. I do a lot of work in the uh, I'm telling you guys that it's time consuming. You need to delegate. Delegate your work. A true leader knows how to delegate the work properly. So another thing that I want to mention here is that I have sent a mail before from an officer that said, if you guys want to challenge me, let me know because I need to be challenged. So if I am trying to do something that is not aligned to the vision for the alliance, even if I am the leader, tell me because I may be swayed sometimes through my emotions. So these, these officers are here also to keep me in line, to keep me in check make sure that the vision for the alliance is correct so um, being a leader you are not there to boss everyone around you're there a good leader does not dictate or boss people around a good leader serves the members so just to recap all of the roles for your appointed officers so first for counselor they are the one who's going to be dictating or managing the territory distribution so you need to rely on whoever the counselor is to uh, build flags in other territories like fortress and uh, probably also the alliance resource center but that one i think you can handle that with all the officers so whenever you deplete and you can assign that uh, you know when that's depleted they can build another alliance deposits and you guys can actually make a routine like hey let's do uh you know uh, what is that like farm wood wood stone gold farm wood, wood stone gold anything like that the warlord is going to be the one that is going to be dictating like war strategies, initiates war. Also, the leader can be the one that starts this as well. Technically, the leader can do everything. But if you delegate this individually, because we have these appointed officers, it's a lot better that way. Now, for the envoy. Now, this is a crucial one because they are going to be the diplomat. So usually when I message an alliance back then, I would directly message the envoy bypassing the leader because I want to make use of that role. Okay, 
So the envoy is probably going to work hand in hand with everybody here. I mean, they all kind of have to interconnect. So the envoy, you know, if there is a, a peace agreement, then they communicate to the warlord and then also communicate to the leader. But you should have a group chat for this. The saint is the one that's going to basically kind of work with the war, kind of like a warlord, because it says here, you take over the world. So this is the saint's role. Make, basically, maybe saints is going to um, manage and think about what type of um, alliance should we be defeating. And then we communicate that to the warlord and the warlord, you know, plans the attack. So something like that. So you guys can take these um descriptions um on the context and think about your own in interpretation but this is my interpretation maybe you guys have a different interpretation but let me know in the comment section below so also there are the buffs here of course i um i actually do like to rotate the buff especially for the saint and uh, give it to um, some of my officers that needs it and then they can you know gather a lot faster it really just benefits them to grow uh, you know, for the counselor, you know, you can also lend that to another officer if they are upgrading. So it really depends on how you guys want to operate your alliance. Well, I hope this video was very informative and very helpful. Do let me know in the comment section below if you guys have a different approach than I do in the video. And um, let me know how you guys actually promote your officers in your alliance. And maybe you guys have better tips on how to become a better leader. Maybe I missed something do let me know in the comment section below because I am always here to improve. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed yet, do subscribe and turn that notification on.